Welcome to this Go Django screencast. Today we're going to talk about basic Ajax in Django. We have a few things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about doing a git request. We're going to talk about the isAjax method on the request object in Django. Then we're going to talk about how to do a post. Then we're going to talk about doing a post with the CSRF token that we use on the back end in Django. To get started with this, I have done a bunch of boilerplate code already, and I'll run you through that. Since I have the boilerplate of the app already done, let's go ahead and take a look at it first. As you can see, I have an Ajax underscore demo file. That is the main project name. Main is an app that I've created. And then we have our static and template files. Main is the main application that we're going to deal with. And first we can take a look at that by looking at the URLs file of our Ajax demo. As you can see, I have main.urls included in our project's main URLs file, and that's what's going to do all of our routing. So we can actually go ahead and take a look at this. As you can see, we already have our URLs basically laid out. Just a basic template view to do our index page. It's going to be the workhorse of all of our stuff. We have ajax.more which is going to be used to going to take our git request that we're going to look at and then we have ajax add what we're going to use to do our posts I also have our basic template set up the one we're going to be the most concerned about is our index page where we're going to do all our end browser work from this isn't really necessarily a standard way to do it it's just a way to do it to drive home the point of doing Ajax. What we're going to spend most of our time looking at is the back-end Django stuff. That's why I've already taken the liberty of adding our HTML in. So the key points are line 9. I have a class that's get more so that we're going to use that in our Ajax call. And the goal is to hit that button and then it adds to our unordered list. Down here I have our CSRF token. And then I have our input field that we're going to use to add our data. And then I have a button that we're going to use with an add to class that we'll use within our JavaScript to do our Ajax calls. Now that we've taken a look at some of our boilerplate code for this, let's actually get into some of the meat of what we're doing. First of all, we're actually doing Ajax calls. So let's go ahead and add our Ajax calls to our JavaScript file. First thing that we're going to do is do our get Ajax call. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some code. This is a very basic example of doing Ajax. We're calling the base Ajax command from jQuery. We're sending it a get. We're going to Ajax slash more. We're on success. We're taking the data back and then we're looping it over and adding that data to our unordered list. Let's go ahead and look at doing our back-end Django code for doing Ajax. This isn't actually standard, but what I like to do is I like to put all my Ajax request methods into an actual Ajax file inside of the app that I'm using. So in this case, we would use um, main slash Ajax.py. As you can see, there's nothing in here. So first we need to do our imports. So now we get to the nitty-gritty. This is actually just like your normal Django views, it's just in this case we're doing Ajax stuff. We already know what our function is going to be, so I'll go ahead and declare that. The interesting thing about the request object that we're sending to our view is it has a handy dandy is Ajax function to it. Let me jump over to some Django code so you can see more about that. The isAjax method on the request object is actually this snippet of code right here. All it really does is check that the request is an XML HTTP request and simply returns true or false. So now that we know about the isAjax code, let's actually use it. So as you can see, we're checking to make sure the request is an Ajax request. If it's not, we're raising a 404. The next thing we need to do is we need to actually return data for our front end to actually use. To do that, we're going to build out a collection, 
and then we're going to turn it into JSON, and then we're going to return an HTTP response. See, we're just doing a simple array. And we're just simply creating some JSON from that array and adding it to our data variable. And next is where the magic happens when we re return our HTTP response. And we're sure to return the content type of application JSON so that our front end browser actually knows what to do with it. So now that we have this actually working, how about we go and actually attempt to use it. And here we have our beautiful browser page. If you remember, we had one already built into our to-do list. And now using Ajax, let's actually hit our button and get more to-dos. Also, if you'll come up here to Ajax slash more, then you get a 404 message. So let's go ahead and go back to our main page. Now let's move on to doing a post. So since we already have our URL ready to go, let's go ahead and open up our Ajax file. The next function that we need is our add to do function. Passing it our request object. Again, we're going to check and see if it is an actual Ajax request or not. But we're also going to check and make sure it's a post because we only want to accept posts when we do a to-do. Otherwise, we want to raise a 404. At this point, you can do any number of things. You can do database save and then generate a custom message. You can do all sorts of things. We're just simply going to create some mock data and send it back to the browser. And then next, we're going to return an HTTP response. And there we go. We have our simple backend Django for doing our post. The next thing that we need to take care of is our JavaScript. Our posting code for doing Ajax is going to be fairly similar to what we have above. I'm going to go ahead and add that now. So when we click on our add to do class, which is our button, we're doing a raw Ajax call. We're setting it up to be a post. We're doing the Ajax add URL, doing a data type of JSON. We're passing a data type with item as the key and whatever is in our to do item input box is our value. And then upon success, we're going to just do an alert of the data that is sent back from the server. At this point, it actually becomes kind of difficult when you realize how Django works with doing posts from your front end to your back end, because typically you have a CSRF token that needs to be taken to your back end. If you don't know how to handle that properly, it can be very frustrating. But fortunately, the Django creators saw fit to actually add some code to their website to make it a lot easier to deal with. And I usually just copy the code straight off of their website and call it good because it works. Another page for the cross-site request forgery protection, I'll just come down to the Ajax part. And then I'll just copy this piece of code here where we do our CSRF uh, token where we get it from the cookie. And then I'll come down here and I'll copy this nice chunk of code. Just copying and pasting the code should work for you. So let's go ahead and go back over to our project and go ahead and do that. As you can see, we have it added in here. We're getting our cookie. We're creating our function to get our cookie. Then we're actually getting our CSRF token from our cookie. We're also determining what 
what, what are safe methods and what aren't for a CSRF token. And then we're calling the AJAX setup so that it automatically sets our XCSRF token value in our request. So with that, we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and start our server. All right, so let's go ahead and add something to do. And there we go, make dinner was added. So therefore, we went through our entire process. We made our post to the back end. We checked to make sure it was an AJAX request, and we checked to make sure it was a post. Since it was, we went ahead and processed it and created our little data message and then sent that back to the browser. And then from there, we processed it like normal. I just want to thank you for watching this, this Go Django screencast. We appreciate all those that have watched. Please visit our Facebook page and like us. And do definitely subscribe to our RSS feed. And so that way you can get the latest video that we come out with. Thank you again and have a good day.